So guys, today we're gonna be doing a field test slash review at the same time of the Ambush Knives Alpha in CPM 3B. So before we get into this and before I start rolling all this awesome use footage, I just wanna note, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you have not already and wanna see more awesome Alaskan content. In addition, I wanna note, uh, this knife is for sale. So if you guys want the chance to get this knife, please just leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, let me know that you're interested and uh, we'll find some way of contacting and hopefully selling this knife to some awesome viewer. <laughs> this tree though. <laughs> so before I get into this review, let me just use this alpha really fast to take off a few pesky needles. There we go. Shouldn't be in my face anymore. So like I said, I'm gonna be, as I talk about this knife, to help break up this kind of monotony of me just sitting here talking to a camera, I'm gonna be rolling in some of the use footage on this knife. I don't have a gigantic amount of use footage with this knife, but trust me, I have been using it. And I will note too, another thing I did is I've become really hooked on the carry method of scout style. So this knife came with, and still does come with for the person who gets this knife or wants to get it, it still does come with a normal belt loop, a kydex belt loop. It's actually a pretty nice kydex belt loop, but it sits like this and it'll sit the knife like this. I really don't like that system. And like I said, I'm kind of hooked on the scout style system, I'm a little bit spoiled to it. So I actually retrofitted this uh, with a tech lock so that I can carry it scout style. So scout style, for those who don't know, just means that the knife sits like this on my belt. Sorry, it sits like this on my belt as opposed to this. There's nothing wrong with either way. I just really prefer uh, scout style. So anyways, that's the only thing I've done to the sheath. That's the only real modification I've made to the knife. And I've actually really enjoyed this knife. And I was sitting down one day, I think like one of my favorite things about this knife is I was looking at this knife. I'm like, wow, this knife, it just... It has something to it that feels really peculiarly familiar to me. It feels like I've almost already had this knife before. And that's because when I was sitting down and looking at it for a good long while, I was actually reminded that this knife looks and feels like the ergonomics feels a lot like the Bark River Knives Aurora. Now for those guys who are unfamiliar with ambush knives, um, BRK or Bark River Knives, uh, they, they do actually make the Ambush Knives series. They make the whole series of Ambush Knives. So uh, that is no surprise really to me to see similarities between the Aurora and this because they're made by the same company. But in all honesty, I actually really like this knife. And I think, and I was sitting there just kind of thinking to myself that same time I noticed that this was a lot like the Aurora. And I was like, wow, I actually really like this knife a lot more than the Aurora. Not to say that there was anything necessary wrong with the particular uh, Aurora, I keep wanting to say the Mora, but the Aurora, but what I always disliked and why I ended up getting a rid of my Aurora, for those who don't know, I did have a BRK Aurora for some time, is the tip. The tip was way too delicate on it and I ended up snapping it several times. Like they weren't huge snaps, but I would snap and snap the tip off, trying to just do simple things like making netting needles, which I have done with this. And, you know, just doing things that really are normal bushcrafting tasks and I found the tip to be exceedingly weak on the version that I had and I fully realized it could have been a heat treatment issue but really I'm pretty sure it was more of the fact that the tip on it was just too acute if you look at this knife hopefully you guys can see there maybe it's better to just like Put it against a dark background but if you guys can see there this tip is very thick this tip is not some little you know tiny delicate thing but at the same time it's also not so overbuilt that it's useless uh, it's still a fine enough tip to do some fine work this is, would not be my go-to for dressing game animals primarily because the tip here is just so bull it's so round and uh, it's not very pointed like i'll bring out the uh BHK Battle Horse, or not Battle Horse, Battle Horse Knives uh, Battle Lore. Here you guys can see this tip on this side is significantly better for dressing game animals because you'll notice that it has a lot better sweeping tip to it and a very, very sharp tip. Whereas this knife, it follows more suit of a Kephart style knife and so it has more of a bulbous kind of tip and there's nothing necessarily wrong with this. I love the uh, Allegheny Knives M38 and the Allegheny M38 has a very similar tip to this. Just a personal note.
So, like I was saying, this knife does remind me a lot of the Aurora, and especially in the ergonomics. I would say it has, in fairness, been a few years since I've had an Aurora, but remembering what I remember of the Aurora, the ergonomics on this knife seem to be nigh on perfect with that knife and spot on as the same type of ergonomics and that's not really a detractor in my opinion that's actually quite a compliment because one thing while I disliked a lot about the Aurora one thing I really loved about the Aurora was its awesome ergonomics I thought the knife uh, much like the BRK Bushcrafter, I also had uh, had very spot on very good ergonomics I will say sometimes with um, Bark River, what I've noticed is they seem to slim things down, in my opinion, a little bit too much, especially right around here. And that's the same with this knife. And that's, in fact, one of the ways I can tell a Bark River from any other knife I get in my hand is if it feels just like the ergonomics just feel just a tiny bit too small for me, uh, that's pretty much an Aurora, or that's a Bark River knife me whereas a knife like this it feels really filling like with this knife there is nothing left to question this knife uh, it just fills the hand completely whereas this knife it fills the hand almost like it's like 98% for me so it's definitely not a knock though I still really like it and Overall, like I said, I've really enjoyed the ergonomics. I will say this knife, being designed by the owner of DLT Trading, it certainly has some more kind of tactical features like this kind of pommel here. It's not very practical, but it's it, it sure looks cool. Um, so that's something to take into account. Another thing with my version, you can get with this knife, you can get either a leather option or a Kydex option. I got the Kydex option here, and I actually really liked the Kydex, especially this forest green. I actually really dig this sheath. It is a really nice sheath. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. The retention is very good. In fact, the forming, uh, as you guys can hear there, it has a nice loud click to it. Um, it's very positive you guys can see here there's a little bit of rattle in it but this knife is pretty well used and so there's a little bit of side to side rattle but overall the retention is excellent um, that is something i've really enjoyed about this knife it has a very good kydex sheath Another thing for being a general purpose or just all purpose uh, field knife or belt knife I actually think it does quite a good job. The only thing I've really disliked about this knife is the fact that the spine, and this is once again another Bark River Knives kind of feature, another kind of Bark River Knives feature, the spine is not particularly sharp on this knife. So I don't have any readily accessible ferro rods to show you guys, or actually I think I do. My Exotac Nano Striker XL. I do have a ferro rod handy. Um, but you guys can see here, hopefully, and then it goes making me a liar. Just kidding. But you guys can see there, I mean, it throws sparks, but it reminds me a lot of a Bark River knife, just like a quintessential Bark River knife in the fact that it, it'll throw sparks. I Hopefully you guys saw that. It definitely threw a few sparks, but they were not hot. Here to show you guys as an example, once again, and this is just because I only have a handful of knives on me today, but once again, the battle lore, whoopsies. You guys can see that you could see that way way different this knife has been purpose purposely um, ground the spine has been sharpened on purpose for striking ferro rods and so way way different uh, and so you can tell that when you're purposely grinding your spine for striking ferro rods there's just no comparison it throws sparks this thing throws sparks like a boss whereas this thing I mean it'll throw a few sparks but it's nothing really to write home about and you could start a fire with it but once again it's not really really that great so that is something that my one true criticism to it is or my one true criticism to this knife is that. Now I will note quickly too why I'm selling it. And I'm not selling this knife because I dislike it. It's actually a really great knife. And my whole thing is, especially with selling gear to my viewers, I'm not gonna sell you guys bad gear or gear that I don't personally like. Uh, I just don't really have a whole lot of need 
for a lot of field knives. If you guys have noticed, I've upped my field knife collection while decreasing my neck knife collection. And so I wanna balance back and get a few more neck knives. So that's why I'm selling off this knife is to help balance it back out because I have a lot of belt knives now, but I don't really have a lot of neck knives. And so that's the primary reason I'm selling this is just so I can get a neck knife and do more reviews slash balance out the collection once again so that's the primary reason i'm selling this and it's nothing really against this knife other than the fact that i just don't like how it strikes ferro rod but that's really the only thing i have against it aside from that i think this knife is actually a really good overall general purpose field belt knife and i really think if you are contemplating getting a bark river knives aurora versus if you guys are even thinking about an ambush knives alpha i would actually recommend the alpha because the alpha is basically the same thing as the aurora but it, has, it takes like the aurora handle but then puts a better blade on it in my opinion this is a far better blade than the aurora ever had and i think that's because the aurora wanted to be a field knife but at the same time it was like a weird hybrid between a skinning caping knife but also it had aspirations to be a, a field knife and what they didn't realize is with field knives you're going to be beating these things these are going to be slabs of steel basically in some instances that you will be beating through logs you're going to be making netting needles with these things this is going to be the workhorse and that's just what field knives are belt slash field knives are so you can't really have this weak tipped kind of caping or dressing knife and when you have a longer blade like this it doesn't make a lot of sense to make it particularly good at field dressing because it's just too big for field dressing in all honesty i dressed one squirrel with that aurora and it was quite difficult and so if i had to again in all honesty, if I had to dress a game animal, I would just take something like my Mora Eldress and not even use this belt knife. So, I mean, pretty pretty much, I would just run this, you know, Ambush Alpha, as you guys can see here clearly, and a Mora Eldress. So, that's basically what I would do. And so, to make your belt knife really super capable at dressing game animals just isn't really that necessary, in my opinion. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've liked this review. Hopefully you've seen some of the use with this knife. It is very capable. I've batoned with it, made netting needles with it. As you guys can clearly see, it made a tri stick with it, tried out some notches. Um, it definitely does a great job at all of the above. It's a great field knife if you can overlook the fact that it doesn't really strike ferro rods, which I understand striking ferro rods off the back of your knife is not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone likes to do that. So I'm not trying to say that this is what you need. You need to have a sharpened spine because there's some people who are worried about cutting themselves on the sharpened spines. And while I don't necessarily see that as a realistic thing, it's never happened to me. Um, if that is your worry, there, this knife is definitely not going to do that to you. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. And as always, I'm out.